um, the wheels falling off Dunk's plough. This is a problem we've got. The final part of the floor is almost done. We've got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning Holly. What a beast. Big breakdown. It's a drill working there. We got concrete today, so dig it guys. That big squad are in doing the concrete. So this morning, dryer's still going. Uh, there's not loads left in the pit. Probably, well, I've just left them less than halfway through it all uh, from yesterday of drying. Doug's put the plough on to go ploughing, and Kev, I think we're we'll putting on the other plough to go ploughing as well. Uh, get some plowing done so we can start putting in winter crops for next year. Back at the farm now. Um, finished what we're doing this morning and just had a phone call that um, the wheel's fallen off Dunk's plough. So, need to go and pick it up. Uh, I think it's needing welded or something, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to see what's happening. Just checking the dryer just now. Also, mixer lorries are in today. Um, concrete that's getting poured, the last of the concrete. I'll just check how this is getting on. It's still drying. And let's check the pit. Yeah, well there's enough there for another batch, so I'll be fine just to leave it just now. And then once I'm back, I can finish, well, I'll shift the rest of that down to the bottom shed. Here we go, we'll get it sorted out. Wheel collected, uh, so I'm going to take it back. It's looking like a tricky bit to weld to actually make really strong, so it needs to be quite strong. So this should be connected like that, but it's totally sheared off and it's going to be an awkward one to weld because it's got to be really strong in here and it can't be squint or else it'll make the ploughing really uneven. So I'm going to attempt to weld it, a tricky one. So basically this shaft sits inside a collar and it's able to rotate and um, so that when you flip the plough over the wheel flips as well. And then this bracket here is a stopper, um, a guide, so it needs to sit like that and it needs to be straight, the shaft, and the whole shaft needs to be dead straight, which is going to be a tricky bit, as well as I need to cut a big bevel in here so I can weld right into the middle, because right now, if I weld it in there, you wouldn't get weld in the middle, you just go a seam right around the outside. So I'm going to try with a plasma cutter and cut a bevel around here. So I'll just run around the outside like this, see what happens. So you can see I've beveled it. Doesn't look too pretty, but it yeah, possibly might work. So I've beveled it all the way around. And then what I'll do, hopefully, I'm just going to use the fact that this is relatively flat. I'll shim this up so it fits on top of here and then I'll use a wee smaller shim just to bring this right up so it's flush to this and then figure out a 90 degree from this plate to this shaft possibly. Not quite sure on that yet. So I've got it set up. It's an awkward one to kind of position. I can't figure out how to position it exactly how you'd, how you'd clamp it or anything like that to get it exactly where it needs to be. Taking a few measurements to try and square it up from this point back here and the same on the other side to make sure it's square that direction to the wheel. This direction, I'm just hoping the fact that the end face there is flat and I've got this wheel flat on the ground as well. will keep that relatively in line. But I've not got much hope in it surviving to be honest. You'll only have seen like wee patches of that because I ended up down on the floor here. But I'll show you what I've done. Try to get as deep in there as possible with one wee weld all the way around. And now I'm going to 
completely fill all that in. I've cranked the power up, cranked the um, wire speed up as well. So hopefully now I've got a nice big hot weld in there. And that's it, welded all around that seam. Don't go too close, it's not that pretty. Anyway, it's pretty square to me. Brackets on square. Just have to take it back along and see how it looks. That section there is my best bit, so you can imagine what my worst bit looks like. So before uh, they're planning it, which we're starting in this corner here, um, Kev went in with the subsoiler uh, along the tram lines and any hard compact bits, and they're deep, deep legs, and they just fluff up the soil where the tractors have driven. And when the sprayers have been in and we've been carting as well and the fertilizer spread there and that just loosens it all off reduces the compaction before we sow it again so that's the bit that started there we've not really got too far yet kevin just joined and then dunk had a breakdown so slow start but once they get going they'll be no problem they're going in tandem and they just set their gps to nine furrow plows because if kev's got a five dunk's got a, a four and then they go in between each other we're back in action, wheels back on. So that's the bit that was welded. Let's see how it works, see if it doesn't fall off or it does. Hopefully don't get a phone call in 20 minutes. Moment of truth. First dump down, still on. So just go in tandem, one, two. That's them going now, so leave them to it. Hopefully won't hear again um, with the wheel. Hopefully that's it fixed for good. Need to go and sort the dryer out. Not been at it for a while, but I think there was enough to keep it going. Um, but there's still um, some barley to shift down to the other shed as well. So we'll get on with that. Concrete's looking well. They've got one more load to come, it looks like. Starting to get the floats on. Start polishing. So this pile of dry seed barley. They'll come out on Wednesday, which is tomorrow actually. And they're going to test it. Uh, check for the germination levels. Check they're all high. Uh, we're looking at 95 to 100%, you never get 100%, but 97, 98 is good. Don't want any lower than that. So they'll test that and all going well starting on Thursday. They'll start taking that away. There's about 250 ton, uh, 29, 29 ton a load. So what's that? Eight loads, something like that. Eight loads or so to go away Thursday, Friday. Um, they might not take them all then, but they're gonna go fairly quickly. We'll get that out of the shed and then we can get the oil seed rape in. In about a week's time, we'll start cutting that. Pushed all that back up into the pit, so there's not much left there. There'll be about three batches-ish. Uh, this pile's now gone. We need to sweep up this whole area and put the rest of it down to the shed just a wee little bit. Um, so we can clear that and then uh, push this all up against the wall. So when it was coming out of the spout, it wasn't kind of coming this way anymore. Um, we'll have to load that in the next few days. So. But basically when you're loading it, you, dry, you go towards the wall, so you end up pushing it against the wall with a bucket. Um, so it'll all end up against the wall anyway. This is what I mean when I say sweeping up. Just gonna let the dust down, settle down before I go in there with a sweeping brush to finish it off and pick up with the bucket. So that's all the barley there, 200 and, uh, about 200 ton. And that'll be used for our pigs and our cattle. So we probably won't actually sell any of this for now. And uh, we'll see how we get on through the year. We might sell some later on, see what the prices do. But there's plenty there to keep us going for the year. We've still got a wee fraction left along the road. We'll bring that along the road, add it to this pile. Um, but it's fit in the shed, no problem. So this is probably, if you fill this store up, it's about 400 tonne at that height. Um, we, have, we, might, we are thinking we might do proper green walls in the shed. Um, so that might be a job for coming in for next year so we can get up to the kind of four meters green pusher in here and we'll be able to get well, if it's 400 full at that height probably get about 700 maybe in here if you get a green pusher in and four meter high on the walls at least 700 so we might do that we've not decided yet and actually the walls would shift out slightly just push that pit up again hey, i'm going to grab that tractor and head along the road to pick up the reel gonna rain tonight and I don't really want to leave it out in the rain. They've obviously got all the concrete board because they put the balance, the leftover, around here. 
I'm finished off. I've kind of done that wee edge last time they poured it, and then they've done more around here and along this edge, just just to stop that edge getting battered. It was getting battered by lorries, and we come in that way with the trailer, so that'll help a bit. Scrabbing this rail, and you can see Duncan Kev in the distance there. Um, there, those two there. Thankfully, the fact that they're still going, or Dunk's still going, means the wheel's not falling off, which is handy. Swap the draw bar again. The pin there you take out. And then slide that one out. And then we chuck on this draw bar, which sits in the holder there. It's Clevis draw bar, and it's to do with the baler. Um, I don't know what this was and asked it the other day. Someone answered, but I can't quite remember. Um, I can't remember what it was to do. It's to do with the baler being a certain distance from the tractor. I'll try and get a comment and put it up. Anyway, this goes in there. Pin goes back in. And then this one goes in the holder. One hand. And that marries up with that. Check these uh, pins are in the right position. These lock it onto the trolley. So, like that. Uh, what else have we to check? Check, PTO's on solid. And the points are in. So these uh, swivel out. And then you swivel them back in the wee handle there. You can see where we've just come from. And you can see Duncan Kev where they're plowing. That uh, brown strip there. Just on that straight edge, that's exactly where they are. I just came from the right of there. This is a problem we've got on this tractor. So it's got quite small rims on it. So it sits relatively low. So this has been adjusted right the way to the bottom um, where it hit hitches on there. So there's no adjustment there, but basically I can't get the wheel all the way down. So you fold it, normally you'd fold that down. It would just, it wouldn't hit the ground and then you'd wind it up. But that's it all the way up the wheel and it won't go all the way down. And it's worse in a field when you put it down and try to get it back on that sinks. Um, I think I think the best bet is when we hitch it up so they put spacers under there. But if anyone's got any other ideas, I can't think of anything right now off the cuff other than spacers in there. So I don't know. That can be today's question of the day is how to sort that problem. been able to give it a wee a kick and a nudge but when it sinks in the field it's a lot harder back now the pitch is filling again there's been another batch come off there there's another three three batches sitting there to do that'll take another nine hours eight hours a couple of hours later and there's been a batch gone already so fill it up again there's a batch out there's one drying at the moment oh there you go just started coming out so after that day, there'll be another one going, and I'll fill this up, and I'll wait to play football, and then I'll come back, and, and I'll be empty. That's the rain just on as well. Perfect timing for football. Pit's full there. That's empty just now. Got my football boots. Rain's just on, so I'm going to shut the door into that shed. We're finished with that anyway. I can shut that under that end. In case it comes heavy, it can come in, and the pit's just there. Uh, right there, so don't want the rain kind of coming in, it can start hitting that crop. So I'll shut those two doors in case it ends up really heavy. Back to the pit there now. Uh, there's two batches there left. There's one in the in the dryer drying, and then we're done. So I'll do one more tonight. That'll probably take us to about 12 ish, and then I'll just shut it off. Do the last one in the morning. Still got my boots on. The final part of the floor is almost done. Once that's finished, that's the whole shed complete. The door's in, the floor's in. Just, we can't go on that bit for two weeks, but all this is ready to use. I'll start bringing blocks in. He's gonna cut the slits tomorrow afternoon, the expansion joints. Just turning it off because there's not gonna be a full batch left after this batch is in. So it's gonna be a balance. So you can't just leave it running all night. You need to then be there to brush it all up and push it all in. And that would be it three in the morning and that and I can't be bothered so it's fine because we're not combining at the moment so 
it'll just get done in the morning. There's no uh, serious rush. So it's switched now onto drying. So it's time to just shut it down. So what I do, discharge off, lets this hopper empty completely and recycle to the top and then it's not getting discharged back into this hopper. And then I'll turn off the bottom conveyor, which is the conveyor that takes it to the elevator, which takes it up. And so I'll give that a second and I'll do that. And then I'll turn off the elevator, then I'll turn off the top conveyor as well. And then it's ready to just be completely shut down with the big red button. Silence. Time for bed. Leave it all day, and walk by my side.